What is cracking everyone? Today I'm going to be chatting about one of the key, well, some of these salvo strategies that you can implement to maintain fat loss. So people think the hardest part of achieving fat loss, and again, I'm not going to use, I hate using that term weight loss. I'm going to say that from the outset. Whenever we want to lose fat, right? We don't want, because people always say to me, listen, I want to lose weight. And I think in my head, listen, you don't necessarily want to lose weight because weight could mean muscle mass, it could, be, it could mean bone mass, it could mean uh, wee things like that, which, listen, you don't want to lose your bone mass, you don't want to lose your muscle mass, um, you want to lose fat. So again, it is sort of thrown around the industry a lot, weight loss, da, da, da. I've even, I'm not going to lie, I've used it myself at times, speaking with clients, even the market products and things like that um, and services, it's just, it's quite pervasive, but hopefully the industry does move away from that term um, more towards fat loss because the key point that I'm gonna get into with this video is one of the number one ways that you can sustain your fat loss is simply by building and maintaining lean, fat-free mass, or in other words, to put it simply, muscle. The more muscle you have, the more likely you are to not only lose more fat, but also maintain your fat loss. Um, there's been several studies done that have demonstrated this effect, where there's two cohorts of people, two cohorts of people being studied, and the individuals who had more fat-free mass, or in other words, more muscle, um, lost more body fat, and also maintained it over a longer period of time. So, this video is going to really discuss many strategies uh, that you can implement that will ensure that you not only do you maintain your fat loss, but also how you can maintain your muscle mass as well whenever you're dieting. That's a key thing. That's, I think that's a key thing that's overlooked a lot whenever um, coaches or anyone else is focusing on the goal of fat loss is you have to also factor in you want to minimize muscle muscle loss. You don't want to lose your muscle whenever you're engaging in a, a fat loss phase. Um, like I said, it's vital that you maintain your muscle mass. Um, also, having more muscle mass results in you having a, a faster metabolism, burning more calories. Muscle burns more calories. Again, it's not that much more. It's only something like 15 to 20 calories per pound of muscle, but still, it, if you have 20 extra pounds of muscle in your frame, those numbers do add up and make a difference like so first and foremost the number one way of maintaining your muscle mass whenever you are in a fat loss phase is engaging in an effective strength training routine or resistance training routine now that can encompass things like barbells dumbbells kettlebells even body weight routines anything that places resistance upon the body and resistance upon the muscles will be an effective routine to help you maintain your fat loss and maintain your um, muscle mass. So, and another key point I'm gonna sort of diverge into here is, studies have also been done on individuals who done only cardio, cardiovascular training to lose uh, fat, uh, individuals who done nothing to lose fat, and individuals who, um, done concurrent training, which is known as strength training coupled with uh, cardiovascular training. And of course, the group that lost the most fat mass was the group that combined cardiovascular training with strength training. And they, for, and interestingly enough, the group that um, done the, um, the cardiovascular training as their only uh, mechanism of losing fat, actually, of course, did lose fat, but they also lost other, um, uh, other forms of body weight, which uh, as the study actually found out was they actually lost a little bit of lean mass as well, they lost a bit of muscle. So it's imperative that you combine uh, strength training with the likes of cardiovascular training to maximize your fat loss. So another, the, another key thing when it comes to maximizing fat loss while minimizing muscle loss is ensuring that you're weight or sorry your rate of fat loss or rate of weight loss is conservative and is sustainable because 
this is a marathon, not a sprint, and you do not want to cut your calories drastically, cut them too quickly, and end up hitting a plateau too early. And you'll hit a plateau, you'll feel starving, you'll feel deprived uh, very quickly, and it's very hard to sort of get, a, get around that. There's only so many calories you can cut. There's only so much more activity you can do. There's only so much more uh, cardiovascular training you can do. So much more strength training you can do. Your body simply couldn't. Your body would not be able to handle the additional workload uh, you place upon it to try and circumvent that drop, drastic drop in calories. So the, my approach, whenever it comes to coaching clients for fat loss, is we. My approach from the from the gate from the get go is to keep calories as high as possible, as maximally high as they possibly can be, uh, while still losing fat every week. And then if need be, calories are dropped. But before you even drop calories, you can do wee things that can augment your fat loss. Um, like adding in a little bit more activity. If you aren't already doing cardio, you can add that in. Um, strength training is kind of the base that I would use with clients. And then we can add on layers to that base to further augment the fat loss. Um, so I suppose I'll, I'll dip into the next point, which is in order to, again, maximize fat loss and minimize, particularly minimize uh, the loss of muscle and maintain your muscle, maybe even build muscle in some cases, because of course you can build muscle and lose fat at the same time. It is very possible. Um, studies have proven that. But the key is you need to have, and you need to prioritize, optimal amount of protein. And in fact, if you are in a diet phase or a fat loss phase, you should actually overeat protein. You should overshoot your protein. And that is exactly what I do with any of my clients who I work with and their primary goal is fat loss. Prioritize, prioritize your protein. I can't emphasize that enough because it will ensure that you maintain your muscle and even perhaps build more muscle if you are in a fat loss phase. It will also be very uh, conducive to uh, facilitate more fat loss because protein is a very satiating macronutrient. It keeps you full, it keeps you satisfied, and you're less likely to engage, obviously, in eating more calories than you should or overeating if you're prioritizing your protein. So there's different recomm recommendations going around. Um, to get maybe Sansi, Gay, Urkhams, PhD, very um, well-regarded guy within uh, the fitness industry, and he recommends for people who are quite lean that they should eat somewhere between two grams to three grams of protein per kilogram of fat-free mass, which is basically your muscle mass. Now, again, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, if you're just getting started, just the, the rule of thumb I like to use with protein is especially with fat loss being the primary goal, shoot for a gram of protein per pound of body weight. That will ensure you definitely eat enough protein to ensure you maintain and even build more muscle and further facilitate fat loss. So, sleep. Sleep is key. Sleep is so, so, so important. I could talk all day about sleep. I I'm so strict to myself when it comes to sleep. If there's anything that I'm really strict about other than training and nutrition is sleep. Sleep is so fucking important. I can't emphasize enough. Um, everything happens in sleep. There's no easy, there's no simpler way to put it. Fat loss, building muscle, um, recovering from workouts, um, repairing of body tissue, um, just restoring your body and your mind to the optimal level it should be. It all happens in sleep. Sleep is the magic time where healing takes place as well. Um, again, I, I'm not getting into too much. You don't get ample amount of sleep. It's not to scare anybody, but you increase your risk of all cause mortality. That is cancer, heart disease, every sort of dis disease or ailment you can think of, it is increased whenever you get a lack of sleep. If you really want to look into it, there's people like uh, Dr. Matthew Walker, um, Sean, Sean Stevenson as well, both um, sort of leading figures within uh, the research behind sleep and its effects on uh, health as well. If you want to look into that more, look into those two guys' work. Um, I think Matthew Walker has a great book called Why We Sleep. Brilliant book. Highly recommend it if you want to learn more about the science behind sleep and the impact a lack of sleep can have on you and your health. So, 
last but not least, um, I'm going to touch on cardio and talk a wee bit more about it. So using cardiovascular training as a tool to augment your fat loss. Um, different ways you can go about this. There's more than one way to skin a cat whenever it comes to cardio. Um, if you don't like running, you can do high intensity interval training. And you can do that on a treadmill, a row machine, on a salt bike. And it's also known as Tabatas and things like that, where you would do, say, for example, a, a 20 second uh, sprint on the treadmill, and then you would rest for 10 seconds, and then you would repeat that for intervals, maybe up to eight or 10 intervals. Um, it's kind of short and sweet, a bit more intense, but if you don't like long distance running, then that would be one of, the, one of the, your best bang for box methods when it comes to doing cardio. And obviously, of course, cardio is very important to keep, for keeping your heart healthy as well and your brain healthy too. Not the biggest fan of hit, you can obviously do your long distance running, going for 5Ks, things like that if you're into your running. Um, if you don't really like running or going for sprints and high intensity interval training, you can, of course, simply increase your steps, increase your activity, going for aiming for 10,000 steps a day, going for, for example, for uh, going, by, going for walks. Um, even just increasing NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is basically just doing more, being more active, but not even really consciously thinking about it. For examples would be taking the stairs over the lift, uh, parking the furthest distance you can from shops whenever you're going shopping in the parking lot. Um, we things like that, that do add up over time as well. 